Shine with my shine. Oh, shine with my shine. No one can do. Turn it up, turn it up. Good morning, 1111, May 30th, with the man himself, Mr. Thomas Cook, live from New York City. Thomas, thank you for coming, my brother. Thank you very much. It's uh, really exciting. Wait, let me finish. It's really <laughs> exciting to be here, Brian. Thank you so much. So excited to be with all of these amazing young men and women on BTV. Incredible. Guys, really exciting show for you. Thomas Cook is the legend, the man. Uh, Really, really dear friend of mine, fraternity brother, mentor, just straight magic man. While you guys are thinking about the questions that you have and the dreams of dream jobs that you have, I want to just talk a little bit about who you are, how you ended up here, and uh, tell us a little bit more about your story. So you started as a singer. You yep. sung for Prince Charles. You wrote one of Larry King's intro songs, right? Yep. Tell us a little bit about what that was like and how that brought you the joy and the music that you carry into your life today. What does singing mean to you? Well, singing, when I was young, was everything that I ever dreamed of. And I wrote in a little book when I was 12 years old, I sat in a reading corner. I used to talk a lot, so they'd send me to the reading corner, talk a lot, you know, like, couldn't. Uh, I don't know. I don't and know about in that. my little book, I wrote, one day I'll grow up, I will sing for the President of the United States, kings and queens, travel the world, help the rich, help the poor. I started on this journey of wanting to write theme songs for charities to help nonprofit organizations, which brought me in the door to meet some of the most amazing people in my life. That was something that I was really passionate about. Mm -hmm. It was something that to me, music was everything. This goes out to all you young people uh, to ask yourself a question. Who am I? What am I? Where am I going? And what do I really want to do? And at that time, I, I sat, watched the sunset every night before I would do a show. And I actually said, I'm done. I said, I have to recreate myself. I said, I don't want to grow old and I don't want to be a Las Vegas singer. And I don't want to grow old and be old looking and dyed hair. I'm not implying anybody in Vegas dyes their hair. I didn't want to. So I decided to uh, say goodbye to show business. And that was in uh, 1999. And I said, how do I recreate myself? Mm. And I, from that moment, said, you know what? I'm going to go. I always wanted to work with the Oscars, the Emmys, the Grammys. I wanted to do production. I ended up going back to L.A., got a job doing that as a PA. And if you don't know what that is, that's a schlep. Kind of like what all you kids are doing and earning your wings and, and along the way, really becoming a better person. Um, and I did the Kennedy Honors. And while I was at the Kennedy Honors, I stayed with an old friend of mine that I'd met many years ago when I was 16. I wrote the national theme song for Missing Children. Mm. And uh, her name was Susan Davis. And I stayed with her for a couple, I, w I was going to say days, but it was a couple weeks. She thought it was coming a couple days. I didn't kind of tell her. And then I ended up um, working in the Kennedy Honors. She said, Thomas, you're amazing. Would you want to work in Washington, D.C.? And I said, no. She goes, you know what, you'd be really good at DC. She said, you could really give back, do a lot within government and politics, and I never thought of politics. Hmm. Um, she offered me a job, went back home to Beverly Hills, sat at my table for a little while, and two weeks later decided to move, and a week later I was in the White House having breakfast with the president. Only in America can that stuff happen. And it's really cool, and, and, and then you had, a, you had many years doing PR for very high-level people, and political folks, um, ambassadors, international businessmen and women, and then you transitioned after decades of really high level connecting the world into biotech, into what you're doing now with time. Tell us a little bit about time and what the, the miraculous, literally miraculous work that you guys are doing. Well, a very good friend of mine I had met when I first moved to New York, um, struggling, starving artists, wouldn't ask my parents for help, Ended up living in an apartment with three other people, sharing bagels. How old were you, by the way, at this point, when you moved to New York? In my 20s. 20s. And uh, By the way, in your 20s, if you're listening, and you're like, oh, I'm sharing an apartment with people, like, everyone shares apartment. Like, 
You have S to. Struggle in your 20s. Live your dream in your 20s. Right? Oh my God. All those people I shared bagels with and coffee and subways. Subways. Subway sandwiches. No, no, the rats. Subways. Oh, so the trains. <laughs> you guys have experienced that, I'm sure. And uh, I met lots of people at that time. Even President Trump came in. I met every star you could ever dream that would come in and out. And one time I met this big bodybuilder. Mm. It was like Danny DeVito and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Mm. And I was I was about 140 pounds back then. Kind of, and it's still the same a little bit. <laughs> um, and believe it or not, one of the things I try to teach young people all the time is we met back then. 26 years later, we're still friends. Mm. He called me up and said, hey Thomas, it's Steve. He goes, I've, um, I've come up with a new treatment. He's a physicist. Um, and he said, I've come up with a new treatment that's gonna change the world of cancer. Mm. And at the time I had been doing some work in Washington with the Secretary of Health, Governor Tommy Thompson. And um, I said, Steve, this is amazing. And I said, as soon as we have white papers, more information that we can present and put together, it would be great. We use no chemo, no radiation. It's only using proton therapy, free radicals. And we're able to use a non-toxic drug that right now we're in our fourth study for um, pancreatic cancer. And we're going to be working on another one after that. And I mean, pancreatic it's cancer is like, it's, all it's like you, when you get that, you're in deep, deep trouble. Most In life, it's always been, there's nothing we can do, have a good time. Yeah. I had the, the, the pleasure of, of writing an article about you guys in Forbes, so let's link that up there. But it was really fun, and I kind of want to talk about that story for a second, but before we do, guys, questions, comments, questions, dream job stuff coming in, hit us up. Santa, we're good? We're good, all right, so hit us up. We're gonna keep going, we're gonna keep talking. And you know what, actually, I ch I ch and I do this, I'm sorry guys that are watching, I do this a lot, I just changed my mind. I just changed my mind about what we're gonna do today. Oh no. I want you to help these guys find their dream jobs. Can we do that? Course. Can we do that? You know what I like about it? It's live, it's gonna happen now, and they have yeah. no idea this was gonna happen. No, no idea, surprise. And I like that better because you know what? When you're one-on-one -on -one with somebody and you can look in their eyes, that means you change your life. And now, I do have to admit, I know nothing about Nothing, but here. we'll talk to them, we'll interview them. Okay. This'll be fun. All right, here we go. So what is it you wanna do? What do you wanna be besides a fashion icon, <laughs> besides good looking, good <laughs> smile? What is your... <laughs> What is your passion? One day I will be a diplomat and work for the American Foreign Service. That is, that is oh such an amazing motivation to want to do something to help your country, help yourself, help others. And you know I live in Washington, D.C. And what was the first thing I just did? I connected the dots with a congressman from your state. Mm -hmm. So in the next week, I'm going to get you on the telephone with the congressman, asking him when you finish your job here, that he gets you, helps get you an interview at State Department so you can go through the process to start filing to work for a State Department. That would be easy. All right, but you have to start the paperwork soon because you have to go into the government website and it takes, it could take mm -hmm. six months to get through the, the, the process. Have you finished school? No, I'm a sophomore. So that's not going to happen. Back that tape up. That's yeah. going to happen once you graduate, because <laughs> yeah. I will not ever do anything until kids finish their education. But what I do want you to do is start studying what it is you need to do at State Department. I will make every introduction. I will help introduce you to an ambassador. And maybe next semester, if you want to do an internship in Washington for one of the embassies, let's work on that. If it wasn't this young man, you yeah. can't choose him. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? What is your dream? Oh my god, my dream. I think about it every single day. It keeps me awake at night. I spring out of bed every day. Decided to make it happen. Okay. My dream is to be the next Oprah Winfrey. Hmm. And I know everyone says they want to be Oprah. I get it. Everyone says they want to do it, but they don't have the ambition, the drive, and the vision. But I truly believe that I am going to be the next Oprah. Brian has met a very dear friend of mine in Washington, D.C. He runs a program, the Washington Media Institute. Uh, the Washington Media Institute takes kids from all over the country. They come in for a semester, they learn journalism, but they also get a, an internship or a part-time job at CNN, Fox, ABC. They get all these jobs and they get placed. One of his girls is now one of the senior uh, producers for um, Comedy Central. You know, when you're ready and you want to look into that program as well, What's so important is that you look at programs that help you network to get to the next place. That's really important. Now, my greatest advice I can give to you right now yes. is when you go out there at, at WeWork and you go get a cup of coffee, you say hello to somebody. 
-hmm. meet as many people as you yep. can because somebody in this office on this entire floor, there are two people that are going to be multi, multi, multi millionaires, and they're going to change the world. They'll be on Inc. Mag Inc. Magazine. Besides him, all right. There's somebody else in this room, and that's what I tell kids when I lecture at universities. And there's a whole class of kids. And there could be a hundred of them. I say, get to know all of you in this room because yep. there's three of you yep. that are going to succeed. I love that. Now go figure that out. What is your biggest dream? Uh, I'd love to work for a non nonprofit. What's your mom and dad's name? Uh, Judy and Thomas. Judy and Thomas. I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> you did a really good job. You know why? Okay. He wants to do things just to help people. Okay. So what charity? Um, I'm not really sure. I feel like I'd love to help with like um, underdeveloped like city. Okay, education. that's funny. So what were we just talking about this morning at breakfast? Here it's, you go, Brian. I want yeah. you to tell him exactly what we Okay, so, so what's interesting about that is today, I had dinner last night with the daughter of a president of a country in Africa. We were talking last night about like ways to take this the, the work that we're doing here in New York Global. And she was we were talking and basically she said, have you ever thought about this idea of nation building? So like the minister of a country would partner with either a university here or with just actual individuals here to go over there and create content, fresh content through the eyes of someone that doesn't live in that country. So that could be something that we could definitely put together this summer. Here's the good thing, yep. because he brought it up. Yep. Now he gets to work with you to help put yep. this program together. Love it. And now, oh, okay. now you wish just came true. <laughs> yeah. What's what? No, don't make yeah, me that exactly. <laughs> but see, if you don't ask the question, yeah. Yeah. if you don't feel the passion and put it out there, you're never gonna find your dream. Oscar! Oh, nice you. Dang, nice to meet you. And how long have you lived here? Uh, two and a half years, ever since I started college. You know. What are you studying? Uh, theater arts, uh, with my concentration being performance and digital media. There's a company here uh, that a very incredible woman in my life, uh, who's my pseudo stepsister, her name is Ellen Krona, and she used to work for Rainbow Media, which owns Women's Entertainment Network, IFC channel, Sundance channel, documentary film channel. Um, yeah. So they own all those shows. She just retired. I would love to ask her advice too, because I'd like to find out what their programs are. What year are you? I'm a uh, rising senior. So. Yeah. Perfect. He's last year. Yes. So I would love to find out at Rainbow Media. Uh, it's also part of the Dolans, which own Radio City Music Hall and Madison Square Garden. That's an amazing group. I'll ask Ellen. We'll see how we can try to figure out, but they are one of the greatest companies. They do Orange is the New Black, you know, all oh, those yeah. shows. Yeah, I do. Okay, all those <laughs> shows. Know all those shows. Um, yeah. So look up Rainbow Media, kind of get your history of that. Rainbow Media, great company, doing lots of great stuff, lots of television shows that you all know, you, your ages all know. So look it up, you're gonna go, oh my God, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. So look at that. Think about somebody else. Also, the other thing is, if you wanna take off some time and you wanna go to California, and you want to do PA work and work on a television set or work at the Oscars or work at the Emmys or to work with one of those television shows, there's lots of work in LA to be a PA behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And I can help you with that. Okay? I know you had to run through a train. Um, Wait, wrap it up. I thought we were just beginning. Are you going to do this show at a specific time every single day? We, we're going to. We need to think about what that, t that looks like. I think we're going to do a 12 12 show Tuesdays so, and Thursdays. So during week. lunch? Yeah. You now, when you take a break from lunch, this is the greatest cup of tea you're ever gonna have. Thank so, you, Thomas. So come on here at lunchtime. Take five minutes, be inspired. You don't have to watch the whole show, but if you want to, I could sing a song, <laughs> I could tap this, I'll come back again. Literally come in and get a cup of tea and watch this man for five minutes, watch this team, be inspired. Thank you very much for having me on the show. Well, before you wrap up, this, my friends, is Magic Moment Monday. We're gonna do a little magic. So I bring mementos that mean a lot to me into the show, and we tell people what it's about. What's but first, okay. don't worry about it. First, I want you to tell us, when you go to sleep at night, what are the two questions you ask yourself? He you just told my secret. So actually, every night before I go to bed, I lay in my bed, and when I was 18 years of age, I was pronounced dead twice in a car accident and I was in a coma after that. Um, lost my eyesight for a while. And I said, after that accident, I said, for the rest of my life, before I go to bed, I will ask myself two questions. Did somebody change my day today? Did I change somebody's day today? 
if I can answer yes to either one, then I go to sleep. Because then I know if I never wake up again, I've done everything I possibly could to be at peace with myself. And this, my friend, is a lavender bush inside of a beautiful Italian bag that you can smell this. It's very soothing. Mm. And the idea is that you rest it on your pillow because lavender calms and soothes. And this I'm is... Not, I'm not calm and soothing. <laughs> uh, well, some days. <laughs> This is a nightly reminder Aww. that you can go to sleep every single night knowing that you have changed someone's day because you have changed my day. So I would like you to have this on your bed so that every night you can rest well, knowing that those questions that you wanted to answer were answered in the affirmative. Mm. Love you, buddy. Thanks for coming to the show. That is awesome. Aww. You are a great guy. Thank you. Guys, thanks for watching BTV. Remember, it's your hour, it's your dream, it's your life, so go get it because if you don't, no one else will. Thomas Cook, thank you so much for coming. Any parting words you want to say? Write in your questions. The man can actually change your life. So you better do it. Take care of everyone. Thanks for watching, guys. A lot of fun. Thanks, brother.